Hey guys, back with another Supercoach video, and after a few good weeks in a row, it's been a very difficult one this time around. Terrible timing for a bad week as well, with lots of people getting big scores with the likes of Jack McRae, Jake Lloyd, or Jack Darling. So yeah, just terrible timing for a bad week, but it's going to have to hope for some better luck this coming week. And he scored 2093. Moved down 4,000 odd spots and I'm back outside the top 10,000. So, yeah, just a poor week overall. I'm pretty surprised that I won 50% of my league matchups, including in my own league. So, I'll definitely take that. And in Shorty Super Coach League, I lost to first place there. So, he's 7 0, and I'm not surprised at all that I lost. So, yeah, unfortunate, but I'm still in the top 8 there. So, that's fine. So, I'll move on to the team. Defense was really poor overall. Rory Laird, top scoring with 102. Savage was good. Sicily, he got moved forward for the majority of the second half, so that was pretty disappointing. Didn't help his scoring, that's for sure. Hopefully that was just Clarker messing around the lineup considering fourth one were getting smashed, so I'd assume he'd move back to defense considering that's his best position and that was just Clarker messing around, so yeah, hopefully that will be the case. Against the Eagles, Cade Simpson was one of many Carlton players that were quiet. Nick Caulfield and Lockie Murphy, the two rookies on field, they weren't really good. Murphy showed some signs in the second half after a really poor first half, so that was good to see. And Ed Richards, my best scoring rookie out of the three, was on the bench, so that didn't help. Midfield was obviously by far the best scoring line with... Six players turning on field. Holman's 122 on the bench. Sucks that it's on the bench, but he's going to make some good cash in the next few weeks, that's for sure. As for the players on field, Fife cops some attention from Hewitt. It's still time, so it was good. Toby McLean, a tough night for the dogs. Still ton, so that was good as well. Dusty cops some attention from Hutchings. Also got caught by Elliot Yo a couple times holding the ball. And yeah, it was a tough day for the Tigers, but... Yeah, he managed to turn up for the first time since round four, so that was good. Dangerfield, a tough day for the Cats, and but he was one of their better players. Paddy Cripps carried the Blues, and Tom Mitchell, 46 touches and a goal, great stuff. I think the one thing that pisses me off, though, about this is that I have six premiums there who turned up, and I picked the only one that didn't. And Clayton Oliver only got 88. I didn't know he had a broken finger until... It was too late, so yeah, if I knew that throughout the week, I would have probably put on Mitchell. I know last video I said it was between Mitchell and Oliver, kept on Oliver, and it was a bad decision in the end. Lost, what, 67 points, so yeah, that's yeah, that, that's no good at all. But yeah, what can you do? First bad captain choice in a while, so yeah, hopefully I can get it right this week. And as for the remaining players on the bench, Spargo was alright, and Ed Phillips... He was, his stats were good, but I guess it was just efficiency and all that, so he should keep his spot. He's been good for the Saints so far, so I'd be very surprised if he gets dropped. In the rocks, Max Gorn, great again, and Toby Nankervis, he had a really good first half, but yeah, it went quiet in the second half as West Coast started to really control the game. And in the forward line, Isaac Heaney, the only one to turn up, so that was good. Devin Smith, I thought he deserved more. Christian Petrarca finally put up a decent score. I thought he deserved more as well, but finally it's good to see something more than a, more than a 40. And Bailey Fridge, great again. Going to make some solid cash in the next few weeks. This new role is really working out for him, that's for sure. Ben Ronk was all right, and Golfy good as well. Henry on the bench, only a 56. It's, time, it's definitely time for him to be traded out with a break-even of 87, I think. And... Zach Langdon only a 59, but he's still got a low break even. So that will do it for the side. I should also mention when I said good right after saying Heaney was the only one that turned up, I meant it was good that Heaney turned up. Not so good that no one else on the forward line did. So moving on to the team for this week. As for vice captain and captain, I'll probably keep the vice on danger against Carlton and captain... There's a lot of options, so that's good. It's good to have. But it's just very difficult choosing the right one. I don't want to have the same problem I did in round 9, picking the only premium in my midfield that didn't ton. So that I want to avoid that. 
but let's see, Mitchell versus West Coast, possibly Fife against North, but Jacobs will probably go to him. Dusty as Vice versus St Kilda, possibly. Even McLean versus Collingwood, you never know. But I'll probably keep the Vice on Danger and the Captain. Probably go to Gorn. He's been in really good form recently. And yeah, I'll just keep it on him for now. There's talk that Hurley might come back this week, so I'll prepare for a full strength side. So I'll put Hurley on field for now. Can't do a bench loophole, so I'll, I'll probably start Richards out of those three. Unless, of course, one of them gets dropped, I'll put a I'll do a bench loophole if I can. But for now, it'd be it would be Richards starting on field. Mids are fine. I think yeah, the rest of the team's fine as is. So moving on to trades. I do have a couple in mind, a couple of targets I have in the next few weeks are Elliot Yo and Jack McRae, as expensive as he is. Yeah, McRae is obviously looking like a must have. It's killing me that I don't have him. And it's really messing with. He's messing with my head, really, in terms of what trades I want to make for this week. Because if I, if I bring in McRae, I'd have to trade out one of my stronger rookies in. Kelly or Fritch. I'm not trading out Fritch. I don't want to trade out Kelly. His break evens are 120, so I can see like I can see why people would want to trade him out. He was used as a money maker in the first place, and yeah, I can see why you'd want to trade him out because he's dropped in price for the first time, and he'll probably end up leaking cash. He hasn't beaten 120. He's gotten close a couple times, but he hasn't actually reached 120 yet so more likely than not he'll be leaking cash in the next couple of weeks so I can understand the reasoning behind trading him out at the same time I can also understand the reasoning behind keeping him is the cats have Carlton and Gold Coast in, in the next couple of weeks Kelly has the round 14 buy so he's playing the next four games you can trade him out at the last buy I can understand both sides to it so it's really tough in terms of deciding what trades I want to make. I've sort of planned a little bit ahead if I trade in one or the other in terms of Yo or McRae. I'll probably do both trades so you guys could see what side, what side I could be fielding come round 10 depending on which trades I make. So if I trade in Elliot Yo, it would be Henry out along with Nick Caulfield. I know he can still beat his break even. It's in the 40s, but he just seems like a slow burn right now. So he can afford to be traded out. And in would come Elliot Yo and then Tim Smith on the bench. There we go, Tim Smith. So that's how the team would look if I had Elliot Yo. My defense would be finished. Full primo. In defense, the seven premiums in the mid with Tim Kelly. Nothing's changed in any of the other lines except for defense, adding in Elliot Yo. And if I trade in Jack McRae, oh, I'd still have Tim Smith, so I'll keep him there. And it would be Tim Kelly out, and I'd have more than enough for McRae. That's how the team would look with. Jack McRae in it, so it's tough. It's really tough. I'd say my trades or what trades I make will be decided on the scans of Yo, so whether he is he's ruled out or not, and possibly Hurley as well, because it's not guaranteed that he's coming back. So if he doesn't come back, then I'd probably be leaning towards trading in Yo, so I don't have to field two of the, or two of Richards and Murphy, because if I trade in Euro, then I trade out Caulfield, so if I'd like to avoid fielding both Richards and Murphy. If both Hurley and Yo are out, then obviously that means I trade in McRae, because he's the only other option I have for this week, as far as my plans go. So that would be, that'd be tough, obviously, but you know, I just have to deal with it for this week. But 
Yeah, it's really, really difficult. I don't know which trade to lean towards, but yeah, I'll have to see what happens on Thursday night. I'm not going to complete these trades because whichever direction I choose to take is messing with my head. I don't know which way to go, so I'm going to leave it for now and wait for Thursdays uh, for the teams to be announced on Thursday night, and that will help me decide which direction to go, because eventually I'll have both Yon McRae and my team after, well, once round 13 comes along. So, yeah, I'll leave it at that. I think once the teams are named on Thursday night, it'll give me a better idea of the direction I want to go with my trades. I wish I knew McRae was going to drop in price sometime soon, but it doesn't look like it, especially with that 177, and he is rolling three-game average for the next couple weeks. That definitely doesn't help. Even if I wait till maybe round 15 or something, he'll probably be around the 700k mark, so that won't, that won't help at all. He'll still be super expensive. So it's either I get him in now or round 13. I'll see what happens Thursday night. It'll give me a better idea of what the hell I want to do with my trades and who stays, who goes. So yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video, which will probably be the round 10 preview.